Hi, so this is our next case where we apply Bernoulli's theorem to casting process. So I've already drawn this image here, uh, this schematic. So what do we have here? We have some mold. There is sand filled in everywhere. So this is your pattern cavity and this is the liquid metal which is already filled in. I have shown the levels till where it is filled in. So in case it is not clear, uh, let me draw this line here. That is the line till where your liquid is filled inside your structure and here this is the this is the top part and this is the level where we are maintaining by refilling the liquid we are always maintaining this level now in this particular case we'll have some different uh, points uh, compared to the previous one so let's say this is my point number one which is the level which i always maintain and this is going to be at atmospheric pressure okay what else we have point number two here somewhere that is uh, then the point number three is here which is your gate of this particular structure and point four now we are going to have at this level this is the level till till which our uh, you know the uh, the pattern cavity is filled okay all right so now let's see there are also different heights that we need to consider now at different pressure different points we are going to have different pressures so we cannot uh, solve this problem like the previous one okay so i have mentioned a few uh, you know these green lines here this height is say the height of the mold so i can call it hm this height i will call some h because this is an important height and we are going to calculate what is the height you know how much my uh, mold cavity or pattern cavity has been filled okay what else this particular height uh, i will because i will call it h2 because this goes to point 2 and this one is h t which is the total height okay fine so now what do we do now we apply the bernoulli's equation between points 1 and 3 that is what we did also in the previous uh, previous uh, you know problem but there the pressures at point 1 and point 3 were the same however here at point 3 we are going to sorry point 3 we are going to have some sort of gauge pressure gauge pressure means this is my pressure which i uh, you know which i measure basically during the process okay so at point 3 we are going to have some point uh, pressure gauge pressure value which i call p3 all right so now when you apply bernoulli's equation again you can go back to the the previous lecture for the fundamentals and what we are going to get here i will just mention it ght will be equal to p3 divided by the density of the metal plus the velocity at point 3 v3 square divided by 2 by the way this is the kinetic energy term as you can already see right so there are basically this is bernoulli's equation is energy equation we are just equating uh, the potential and this total energy so which will have kinetic energy term and the potential energy term all right so this is what we are going to get which is say our some equation equation number one okay so now what else if we apply the same Bernoulli's equation between points 3 and 4. Okay, now what will happen? What is V4? V4 is the velocity at this point, right? Point 4. And we assume that since the gate is much, much, uh, you know, narrower compared to your uh, entire mold. Now, here in this image, it may, it, in this illustration, it may not look that small. But gate is much thinner. So, there the velocity is much higher than what we have at point 4 also most of the kinetic energy is pretty much lost after point number 3 so we can assume that the kinetic energy term there is 0 or v4 is extremely small and can be neglected okay so in that case we can from here obtain p3 this particular equation p3 divided by rho of the metal will be equal to g into h and this is the h that we are talking about okay so now if you take these two equations equation 2 and equ equation 1 and equation 2 after you equate and place the values from one to another then this is the this is what so this is from equations 1 and 2 okay so these are equations 1 and 2 not point 1 and 2 what you get is this vg which is equal to v3 v3 which will be 
again in the same kind of format root 2 gh but this is going to be root 2 g h t minus h so basically now your effective head height head is the column height effective head height is this term h t minus h so that is basically your effective head okay head is the liquid column that is going to be h t minus h in a way all right now what do we do about the area part and the uh, what was important for us earlier was also to calculate the uh, one velocity and two time time is the filling time here right so how do we calculate that part now all right so well what happens here now we know that this liquid is now very slowly filling so we rather than taking one big value or one quick value what we do is we do it in terms of dt and dh so there will be some uh, you know our liquid is filling to a height dh in a time dt okay so basically height d should i write that h i g h t height a dh is covered in time d t so that is now that is now uh, how we are going to deal with this okay let's say a m is the cross sectional area of the mold and the air uh, so cross sections of mold and similarly a g is the cross section of the gate okay so now what do we have here a m d h will equal this a g velocity of g which we have calculated previously and d t right all right so let me call this equation number three now if you equate these equations huh, the previous one at uh, this equation number this let me also call it actually this should be three and let me call this four so now if you equate these two three and four then what you're going to get is an expression that looks like this so you'll have one divided by root two g i will quickly write this down dh divided by ht so now your head height is ht minus h and that will be equal to ag divided by am dt now this looks like something that can be nicely integrated so let's say when the time t equals so we need to calculate the total time of filling so we'll start with time equal to zero right and also height equal to zero and then there will be some filling time that we call tf that is what we need to that is going to be our final values right so we calculate from zero to tf and tf is the filling time filling time okay what else do we have here h will equal h of m right when the com the mold is completely filled okay so now these are the parameters we need to integrate this particular equation so let us just integrate it from 0 to h m height and 0 to t f time that is what we need to do so basically this part is constant here we integrate it from 0 to the final height h m and the part here also except the constant parts 0 to this is your final filling time right and from here you can get this expression for the filling time that is a m divided by a g you can do it for yourself with a simple calculus 1 divided by root 2 g and h t minus you can actually also check if my expression is correct okay so this is the final uh, you know your filling time expression so these are the expressions that you're going to use while solving problems related to complicating cast or mold designs.